In this module, you will learn about the absorption of digested products. Absorption of food is a crucial event in the digestion process. After complex food has been broken down into smaller components, it needs to be absorbed into the blood and lymph so that it can be transported throughout the body. Although absorption takes place in different parts of the alimentary canal such as the mouth, stomach, small intestine and large intestine, maximum absorption occurs in the small intestine. The villi on the intestinal wall increase the surface area of the small intestine and help to efficiently absorb the digested nutrients such as glucose, fructose, amino acids and electrolytes. These nutrients from the food pass through the intestinal mucosa into the bloodstream and are distributed throughout the body. Absorption takes place in the intestinal mucosa through passive transport and active transport. In passive transport, there is no expenditure of energy. There are three types of passive transport, simple diffusion, facilitated transport and osmosis that assist in absorption. Small amounts of glucose, amino acids and electrolytes such as chloride ions are generally absorbed from a higher to a lower medium by simple diffusion. Whereas fructose and some amino acids are absorbed down a concentration gradient with the help of a specific carrier protein through facilitated diffusion. On the other hand, transport of water takes place from a dilute to a concentrated medium through osmosis. Absorption also takes place from a lower to a higher medium through active transport, which is much quicker and requires energy. Nutrients such as sodium ions, glucose, galactose and amino acids are transported actively. Unlike carbohydrates and proteins, fats are not absorbed through the intestinal villi. Fatty acids and glycerol are insoluble in water and therefore cannot be absorbed by the intestinal cells directly. They are first acted upon by bile salts to form small spherical droplets called micelles which can easily move through the intestinal mucosa. As micelles enter the intestinal mucosa they are coated with protein to form small fat globules called the chylomicrons which are transported into the lymph vessels called lacteals in the villi. These lymph vessels ultimately release the absorbed substances into the bloodstream. Besides the small intestine, other parts of the digestive system also play a role in the absorption process. For example, certain drugs are placed in the mouth under the tongue so that they can be absorbed directly into the blood capillaries. The stomach wall directly absorbs certain foods including simple sugars and alcohol and they do not remain in the stomach. While water, some minerals such as potassium and sodium and drugs are absorbed in the large intestine. These absorbed nutrients are transported to different tissues of the body through the blood vessels and this process is called assimilation. However, the digestive wastes pass through the large intestine where water is absorbed and waste is solidified into feces. The fecal matter moves towards the rectum due to peristaltic waves in the walls of the colon which finally eliminates the waste through the anus. If the digestive system does not function as smoothly as it should, 
it results in different types of disorders. Inflammation of the intestinal tract takes place when there are bacterial or viral infections. Parasitic infections are caused by tapeworms, roundworms, hookworms, pinworms and others that usually infect the intestine. Indigestion takes place when food is not properly digested and one experiences a feeling of fullness, pain or heartburn. This usually takes place due to inadequate enzyme secretion, anxiety, food poisoning, overeating and spicy food. Constipation is another condition of the digestive system in which an individual has uncomfortable or infrequent bowel movements. Vomiting causes forceful contraction of the stomach and ejection of the stomach contents through the mouth. This is preceded by a feeling of nausea. Medical conditions such as jaundice result from excess of bilirubin or bile pigments in the tissues and body fluids. It affects the liver and causes the skin and the whites of the eyes to turn yellow. Diarrhea is another condition in which there is an increase in the liquidity of fecal discharge and bowel movements. It occurs when enough water is not removed from the stool, making the stool loose and poorly formed. Thus we have seen that absorption and assimilation of food is essential and disorders in the digestive process can lead to severe complications. You have now come to the end of this module. In this module you learnt that Absorption is the process by which the end products of digestion pass through the intestinal mucosa into the blood or lymph. Absorption is carried out by passive and active transport mechanisms. The organs of absorption are the mouth, stomach, small intestine and large intestine, of which the small intestine is the principal organ for absorption of nutrients. The final products of digestion, glucose, fructose, fatty acids, glycerol and amino acids are absorbed through the mucosa into the bloodstream and lymph. Assimilation is the process by which absorbed substances finally reach the tissues for utilization. Digestive wastes are eliminated through the rectum through the process of defecation. Bacterial, viral and parasitic infections, indigestion, constipation, vomiting, jaundice, and diarrhea are some common disorders of the digestive system.